Good morning, this is Angela with Parker's House Frau. I have found a quiet-ish corner of the house in which to film this morning. Uh, this is my oldest child's bedroom. Our upstairs is basically like a sort of converted attic. It's finished. We keep saying we're going to come back and make it nicer, but my two teenage daughters have had the run of the upstairs forever. And then we also have a space for crafting up here. So our loom is up here, sewing machine. And then also my daughters are painters. And so there's canvases and pigment and easels everywhere up here. This is a busy, messy craft space. But at the moment, it's quiet. My eldest kid is at work. My second kid is downstairs cooking herself some lunch. I can hear George doing somersaults in the living room downstairs. And Hal is in the basement working on his math. So this is like a quiet space to have a few minutes to film. So I thought I would share some thoughts with you all that I've been trying to find the time to get on camera for several days. First off though, I want to say thank you to everybody who left such kind, thoughtful, encouraging comments on my last video. I'm really, really struggling with what to do with this channel. And y'all just gave me a lot more data points and a lot more um, feedback that is helping me focus the decision making. So I think I'm probably going to end up merging this channel and my main channel, Parker's Permaculture, and just do like a weekly house frow video on that channel. I'm not 100% sure yet. I really have um, a tendency to make snap judgments and to make quick decisions and, you know, lots of therapy and, um, you know, maturation as a person. I am, try to be much more conscientious now about not rushing into decisions and giving myself time to ruminate over things, giving myself time to um, really look at something from all angles and to not make a decision when my emotions are really high, to not feel pressured to jump just because um, I am feeling really stressed or really rushed or really harried. So I'm leaning that way and hopefully soon I will be making a formal announcement. But for now, I'm still going to try and make content on this channel. So I hope you'll still hang around here and watch for now. And I hope if I end up transitioning everything over to that channel, that you'll continue to go over there and watch as well. That would be amazing. This kind of ties into today's topic, which is over productivity and homemaking. Of course, no sooner did I try to get into the main body of this video than my 10 year old was shouting up the stairs that the timer was going off in the oven because my pumpkin bread was done. How completely apt for a video about over productivity. <laughs> So the reason that I wanted to talk about this subject today is that I struggle mightily with overproductivity. And I thought I would just talk about how I think that those of us that are homemakers, um, particularly those of us that are parenting children and caregiving for children, really um, can have the pressure to be overly productive put on us as an external force. Well, we also have to deal with kind of the internal pressure from internalized trauma that we put on ourselves to be overly productive. And because this is something that I'm continually struggling with and like work through in therapy and whatever, that I felt it was really important to talk about because it's something that I know I experience and maybe you have gone through it too, or maybe you are still going through it too. And again, I think that those of us that are homemakers, can really face that kind of um, extra layer of pressure from our society to be overly productive, or not only to be overly productive, but this kind of weird default assumption that like maybe we just naturally are overly productive as kind of a, a moral good. So our society tells us that, well, as homemakers, obviously you're like juggling 14 balls at once. Y'all are the kings and queens of multitasking. Of course, many of us that are homemakers caring for young children, well, parenting young children, that's one layer. Keeping your home is another layer. Keeping the family budget and making sure that you keep everything balanced and frugal and live within your means. And you are making your own clothes, mending your own clothes. You are you know, having a garden and producing everything in your garden. And then you are preserving things. You're making jams and jellies and pickles and dried fruit and homemade pasta sauce. And you are also doing home improvement projects and buying into the myth of the mommy blogger where you are remodeling your house while you live in it and you're doing it all on a super tight budget. And then perhaps you are also like making it a side hustle, like, like totally like I am where I'm doing these things already. I'll just go ahead and make and edit 
and upload and publish videos or blog posts as well to see if I can maybe monetize the things I'm already doing a little bit because I live in a culture where like I'm barely getting by where like our culture and our economics and our state of our society is such that like the average family is struggling mightily and like a little bit more pennies in the in the piggy bank will help pay for braces or will help pay the mortgage or will help provide something for my kids or like maybe put something in their you know like college savings fund that wouldn't be there otherwise so there's all these like gajillion layers um, or maybe like we're seeing this some where you should be able to parent young kids, care for our house, volunteer in our community and like go to grad school at the same time. Like the cultural expectations of homemakers are just pff, terrible. And I have as a individual been very, very guilty of being really freaking good at juggling most of these things all at once because I struggle with overproductivity. So I want to make really clear that if you hear me talk about things on this video or on this channel, I hope you don't feel the burden to do all of the things I do. Because I will say that um, all of those things I just listed, like I do all of those things. I'm just listing all of those things out of my head that are in my regular repertoire, fully acknowledging that there is a significant level at which those are unhealthy, that it is taking on more than I should and creating no time for rest and rejuvenation. And that has all kinds of consequences that come out all over the place. So I'm really well aware of that kind of cultural su superimposition that we should be the masters of multitasking and that somehow those of us that are homemakers have this natural ability to just take on more and like we are just a bottomless well of energy and um, we don't need the kind of downtime that other people need. That's just like a terrible untrue stereotype. And I bought into it for a really long period of time. Because, as I said, external factors and an internal trauma. I was raised to believe my self-worth is very much tied to how productive I am. And by that, I mean how much I make my home neater and tidier and more organized. How much I produce um, in terms of crafts, in terms of tasks, in terms of um, income and how much I improve myself as a person in terms of working on myself as an individual and also mostly increasing my knowledge base. I'm becoming a human encyclopedia. If I am not um, undertaking something that is making the world a better place or making myself a better person, then I am wasting my time and I am a failure. That is what I internalized very early in my childhood. And it's been a message that has been preached to me over and over and over again. That's really, really not healthy and not normal. And I try very hard not to teach my kids that. I try and teach them that rest, relaxation, rejuvenation, entertainment, and downtime are all things you need and deserve as a human being. But those of us that are homemakers often find we are expected to juggle so many of these things and be like, no problem, I got all this. I find that as a homeschool mom, folks have often expected that like, well, you're home all day. And also like, you're already somebody who does 12 things at once. I'm going to ask you to help out with this. I'm going to ask you to volunteer for this with the expectation that like, I can always handle one more thing on my plate. And that's just not true. <laughs> but the problem is for those of us with overproductivity, we're like, sure, we'll do it. And then we find ourselves stressed out and depleted. Our health suffers, um, our sleep suffers, and our overall well-being suffers. So our job as a homemaker is not to sacrifice our quality of life for our household or our community. We can care for the planet. We can care for our communities. We can care for those in our household while also caring for ourselves. Um, the book that I'm working on about homemaking, that is one of the central themes. You have a right to a high quality of life. Homemakers are caregivers, but that does not mean that we are sacrificial lambs on the altar of making other people's lives better while we suffer. So I think it's really important that if we are going to be homemakers, that we push back against the message that we should embrace over productivity, that we should manage to do all of the things all of the time with a smile on our face, like we can take on more than other folks, because it's just not true. 
And I think that it's important to make sure that message isn't perpetuated for our children. It's important for other homemakers that we don't normalize that kind of behavior. I remember ages ago when I was working in the front yard of my garden one day and my third kid, who's now about to turn 14 and is six foot two, was a little baby on my back. And I was digging in the garden and these folks were on a walk and the woman shouted at me from across the street, ma'am, I see you out here every day and you are the gitter dunnest mom I know. And at the time I like swelled with pride because, you know, this was me in my 20s and I still believed over productivity was a good thing then. Like, of course I can take on everything. But now I look back on it and I'm like, gosh, that's just more of the like, our society has told everybody else over productivity is a moral good. We believe that lie. And it's really harming us in the long run. But in the moment, way back then, I was like, this is a badge of honor that I am going to wear proudly. Yes, I am the getter dunnest mom. I do everything. And um, I am superhuman in that way because I have been raised to believe that I have no worth as a person unless I am productive, unless I am making my home beautiful, my garden beautiful, unless I'm caring for the planet, unless I am caring for other people, and unless I'm a perfect mother. I really want to encourage those of us that are homemakers to make sp space for caring for ourselves as well. We deserve care. We deserve to model good and healthy behavior. We deserve to be treated with that same kind of good and healthy behavior. And if you struggle with over productivity, I would really encourage you to get into therapy about it. Like unpack all of why that is that your self-worth is tied to how much you get done and um, know that it can feel really, really difficult to let go of that to rest in the fact that your self-worth does not come from how much you make, how much you care give, and how much you are a perfect homemaker. That is not where you derive your self-worth. I know for me, next week as a um, delayed birthday present for myself um, and an assignment from my therapist, I am going to go spend the night at Edgefield, which is this like fancy McMinimins hotel about 20 minutes from my house. I'm going to take an entire day off of parenting, off of homemaking, off of working part-time. I am going to rest, relax. My therapist gave me the assignment of taking no work, no video to edit, no videos to research, no crafts to work on, no self-improvement projects of any kind. My homework is to just rest and learn how to have downtime without self-judgment, without anxiety, without um, feeling that I have to get things done or I don't matter. So I'd encourage you if you're struggling with overproductivity, maybe you could find time to do something like that, to undertake that kind of homework, which um, I know my therapist knew that I would do because she's like, well, you are really task oriented as most overproducers. And so I know that if I give you a homework assignment, you will do it. But this is a weird turned on its head homework assignment in which the goal is to not have a goal and to not be productive. The goal is to reject all of the to-do lists, to shelve them and just touch base with yourself and feel what it feels like to really have time off. So I now have to get my kids to the playground because the reality is my schedule is really busy and I am struggling still on a daily basis. It's still a daily active um task for me to try and figure out life balance and over productivity, especially with four children, caring for an elderly father, um, trying to run a small business, trying to homeschool my kids and trying to take care of a home and garden. Just a second, buddy. I'll be down in a second. But it is a daily challenge, but it's really good in the end. I think the results are really, um, they're really helpful because as homemakers, we're engaging in a career that not only helps those around us, but like it's something that should bring us fulfillment. It's not something that should drain us down to nothing. And it's something where we value all people. And that means learning to value ourselves um, for who we are intrinsically as people, not what we can get done. So if you have thoughts on this, I hope you'll share them with me. Um, I need to go. My boys are anxious to get loaded in the car. So I'll be back soon. I hope that you all take care of yourselves. I hope that you know your self-worth does not come from how much you produce, that your self-worth as a homemaker and that your value as a homemaker is not tied to your productivity. And I hope that you find time for rest and self-care. Thanks.